This is a reading of Rolling Thunder in the Mountains, Chapter 18. Morning came, but the sun hid its face. The cold wind was thick with falling snow. Between our camp and the soldiers, the snow was so deep that I could not make out the bodies that littered the frozen ground. With first light, the shooting began. Soon the air was filled with smoke from rifles, and I could no longer see the falling snowflakes. Through the mist, I saw flashes of guns. That day, while the warriors fought, we dug tunnels in the damp earth with our knives and commas hooks. By nightfall, we could scout, we could scoot on our stomachs from one shelter gully to the next. I crept through the tunnels until I found Dear Woman. She and Bending Willow were safe. I swept Bending Willow in my arms and held her close. She waved her small fists and gurgled with laughter. My sister had been on this earth for four moons. I thought that she might not live to see another moon. I gave Dear Woman the buffalo meat I had not eaten. She needed food to make milk for my sister. That night I stayed in the gully with Dear Woman and Bending Willow. We sat with our backs against the dirt wall. Our hearts were heavy and we talked little. I slept briefly, but mostly I thought of our beautiful valley, of its blue lake and its wandering streams, its mountain peaks and sheltering valleys, its tall trees and green meadows. I thought I would never see it again. When the sky grew light, the battle began anew. By now, those who could escape had reached Sitting Bull. Word passed through the tunnels that he would surely send a war party of the Sioux to help us. If help did not come soon, we would be beaten. Our warriors were careful to shoot only when they saw a careless blue coat, but our bullets would not last forever. The rifle fire from the soldiers died away. It became a war of sharpshooters, but the soldiers' big cannon spoke all day. It threw bursting shells into the air. Pieces of metal rained down on us, and we held buffalo hides above our heads to keep them off. Some time after midday, the soldiers stopped firing the cannon. A great quiet spread over the plain. I heard shouts and climbed onto a heap of buffalo skins so I could look over the edge of the gully. The snow had stopped and I could see across the plain. My heart caught in my throat. A white flag waved above the camp of the blue coats. It was the sign for truce. A voice called, Colonel Miles wants to see Joseph. My father did not trust the soldiers. He sent Tom Hill, a Nimipu, who could speak the white man's words, to talk with the blue coats. Before the sun had crept the width of a lodge pole, Tom Hill called for my father. The colonel would meet Joseph at the space between the two camps. My father left his rifle pit. With two warriors, he walked toward the soldier's camp. Several blue coats walked toward him. General Howard was not with them. One of the soldiers had silver birds on his shoulder. It was Colonel Miles. Tom Hill walked beside him. They met in the center of the plain. Chief Joseph laid down his rifle. The warriors placed their rifles on the ground. For a time, they talked to the blue coats. The colonel waved his arms and pointed at our camp and then behind him. My father shook his head and made the hand sign that meant never. 
he turned and began walking back to his rifle pit. The white colonel pulled a pistol from his belt. The other blue coats grabbed my father and held his arms in back of him. They shoved him around and marched him back to the soldiers' camp. Anger rose in my throat. Again, the blue coats had broke a truce. My father trusted too much, and now he was a prisoner. Then something strange happened. A white officer rode into our camp. It was a curious thing for him to do. Yellow Bull acted quickly. As the officer passed him, Yellow Bull grabbed the reins with one hand and pulled the blue coat from his horse with the other. Our warriors surrounded the officer and pushed him into the gully where I stood. The warriors jumped down after him. Kill him, shouted two moons. He pulled a knife from his belt and took one step toward the officer. Yes, kill the soldier who wars on women and children, said Swan Necklace. Kill the soldier who shames the flag of truce, said Ferocious Bear. The warriors moved closer to the officer. His back was pressed against the wall, against the wall of earth. But he did not drop his eyes. He looked at two moons and his gaze was steady. Yellow bull stepped between them. Wait, he said. White bird came through the tunnel. He stood and stretched out his hands. You are children, he said. Do not harm this man. As long as he lives, Joseph is safe. When he dies, the blue coats will kill Joseph. Tom Hill, who was back among us, came in with one of the rifle from one of the rifle pits. He talked long with the officer and changed his words so we could understand. The officer's name was Lieutenant Jerome. He had come to see if we were ready to surrender. White Bird laughed, but it was a dry sound without joy. This blue coat is also a child, he said. Let him stay in the shelter. Yellow Bull will guard him. The sound of running feet will see that he has water. Sorry. Sound of running feet will see that he has water and food and a buffalo rope to keep him warm. Those are my words. The old chief left through the tunnel and worked his way back to the rifle pits. Two moons beckoned to Swan Necklace and crawled into the tunnel. Before leaving, Swan Necklace turned to me and put his hand over his heart in the sign of love. The soldier spent the night wrapped warmly in a buffalo robe. He slept soundly, but Yellow Bull and I did not sleep at all. When the soldier wo awoke, he washed his hands and face in water that I brought from the stream. He drank two buffalo horns filled with water and ate buffalo meat and cold mush while Yellow Bull and I watched. He walked back and forth, back and forth. Yellow Bull's eyes followed him. He sat with his rifle across his knees. The soldier had no chance to escape, but he showed no fear. The soldier Jerome pulled a piece of white paper from his pocket. He took out a pencil and made many marks on the paper. Then he called for Tom Hill. When Tom Hill came to the shelter, the soldier spoke the marks. Tom Hill told us what the marks said. They said that the soldier had good food, a warm bed, and good treatment. He hoped that the blue coats were treating Chief Joseph the same way. White Bird sent Tom Hill to the Blue Coats with the talking paper. Soon Tom Hill was back with a talking paper for the soldier. It said that the White Colonel would send my father back to us if we would let the soldier Jerome go free. No, said White Bird, the Blue Coats have tricked us before. They will not trick us again. If the Colonel speaks true, he will bring Joseph to the ground where we met before. 
and we will bring the soldier Jerome to the same ground. Tom Hill put these words so the soldier could understand. He changed them into marks on the paper and Tom Hill carried it back to the white colonel. He watched Tom Hill enter the camp of the blue coats. We waited. Soon my father walked onto the plain. White soldiers were on each side of him. Yellow Bull told the soldier Jerome to climb out of the gully. White bird and looking glass waited for him. Two moons and ferocious bear joined them. All walked out to meet the blue coats. The soldier Jerome shook hands with my father. They changed places. Our chiefs and warriors brought my father back to our camp. The blue coats pulled down their white flag and the shooting began. <laughs>